Virtual private networks, or VPNs, are essential to conduct business on the road. One option that you could use for a provider is OpenVPN. Cisco doesn't support OpenVPN, but since it is compatible with RV160 and RV260 routers, we wanted to show you this as an example. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll show you how to configure OpenVPN with certificates on the RV260 and RV160 for Windows users. This is the most secure method. I'll start by generating a certificate. I'll click on Administration and select Certificates. Then I'll choose Generate CSR and CA Certificate, and I'll enter a name for the certificate. For the subject alternative name, I'll select FQT. This name can be ambiguous, but the name must have a dot in it. Here, I'll enter the common name, include a valid duration period, and click Apply. It's important that the common name has the same name as the subject alternative name. I'll create a second certificate by selecting Generate CSR and choosing Certificate Signed by CA Certificate. Then I'll enter a name, select FQDN for the subject alternative name, and enter a name. Okay, I'll enter the information again. The common name must match the subject alternative name. For the certificate authority, I'll go to the certificate that I created earlier and enter a valid duration period. Subsequently, I'll go to System Configuration, Add a Group, and name that group. Let's make sure that OpenVPN On is selected and click Apply. Now I'll create a new account, click Add, and enter a username and password. This will be the password for my OpenVPN client. Afterwards, I'll pick the group that I've just created and click Apply to Save. Under User Group, I can see that the group that I previously created is enabled for OpenVPN. Next, I'll configure the OpenVPN settings by clicking on VPN and selecting OpenVPN. Following this, I'll click Enable and select WAN for the interface. For the CA certificate, I'll pick the CA certificate authority that I had created earlier. Make sure the service certificate is a second certificate. I'll then select the password and the certificate for client authentication. Let's add a second DNS server at 8.8.8.8, which is a known Google DNS server. In this example, I'll leave split tunnel enabled and add the network as our router. This will grant access to our router's network through the VPN. Next, I'll choose the client certificate that I previously created. I'll export the file and click Generate. Keep in mind that if we have more than one client, I'll need to do this for all my clients to connect into the VPN. I must request the specific client certificate that I created and export the OVPN file. Remember that each client will need their own client certificate. If I'm double natted, I will have a few more steps to complete. Sometimes the RV router will be double natted if it is behind a modem or a router. I can check if I'm double natted by clicking on System Summary. Under WAN, I should see an IP address. If this IP address is a private IP address, then I'm double natted. If this IP address is a public IP address, I won't need to worry about the next steps. For those that are double natted, I'll need to open our OVPN file and change the IP address where it says remote. Following this, I'll need to enter our public IPs. If I'm double natted, I must confirm that we are port forwarding port 1194 to the Cisco RV router. Make sure to save the changes to the file. Here is my OpenVPN client. A new profile for my old VPN file must be added. So I'll click on Browse, locate the file, and export it from the Cisco RV router under Server Hostname. I should see the public IP address of the RV, the username and password from the account I created earlier, and then I'll click on Connect. I now have secure OpenVPN up and running on my network. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.